Ladies and gentlemen, I kindly request all of our esteemed guests to take your seats. Now, before the ceremony begins, I would like to remind all of you to switch off your phone or set it to silent mode. Please be reminded for all guests to stand up upon the arrival of our guests of honour. Thank you. Yang berbahagia, Datin Paduka Mastera Haji Muhammad, Director of Perbadanan Perpustakaan Awam Selangor PIPAS. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Nur Azia Muhammad Awal, Commissioner of Suhakam. Yang berbahagia, Dr. Ahmad El Muhammadi, Assistant Professor at the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, Istaga IUM. Yang berbahagia, 
Mr. Ahmad Fahmi Muhammad Samsudin, President of Malaysian Islamic Youth Movement ABIM. Yang berbahagia, Mr. Hidayat August Han, the President of International Union of Easter Christian Organization. Yang berbahagia, Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, Secretary General of International Union of Easter Christian Organization. Yang berbahagia, Dr. Fatin Nur Majidina binti Nordin, the Vice President of Malaysian Islamic Youth Movement ABIM. Yang berbahagia, Mr. Khairul Anwar Ismail, representative of ABIM Press. Yang berusaha, Ms. Nurul Farhana Ahmad, director of the East Turkistan Women's Report Lounge. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, and advocates for human rights. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and a very warm welcome to this momentous occasion of the launching of the East Turkistan Women's Rights Reports and the Forum of Sisterhood Beyond Borders Fighting for Women's Rights in East Turkistan. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed, let us express our heartfelt gratitude to our organizer today, Malaysian Islamic Youth Movement ABIM, with the collaboration of Perbadana Perpustakaan Awam Selangor, PIPAS, and the International Union of East Turkistan Organization, as well as all those who have dedicated their time and effort to bring today's ceremony to success. We are privileged to have all esteemed guests among us today and whose commitment to the cause of human rights makes a lasting impact. I'm Irene Hafiza Husaini, you will be your MC for today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, today's occasion is more than just a ceremony, it's a testament to our collective commitment to the principles of human rights and dignity. In a world that is often marked by challenges, it becomes our responsibility to shed light on the truth and advocate for justice. East Turkestan and its people, with its rich history and diverse culture, has faced numerous trials such as genocidal acts by China. Today, we come together to launch a report that seeks to unveil the realities, the struggles and the triumphs of the people in this region. It is an opportunity for us to stand united in our pursuit to justice and to amplify the voices that often go unheard. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is my distinct honor to invite Yang Berbahagia, Dr. Fatin Nur Majlina Binti Nordin, the Vice President of Malaysian Islamic Youth Movement, to the stage for the welcoming speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia Datin Paduka uh, Mastura Haji Muhammad, Director of Perpustak Perbadanan Perpustakaan Awam Selangor, PIPAS. Yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Nur Aziah Muhammad Awal, Commissioner of Suhakam. Yang berbahagia Dr. Ahmad El Muhammadi, Assistant Professor at the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, ISTAC. Yang berbahagia Mr. Ahmad Fahmi Muhammad Samsudin, President of ABIM. Yang berbahagia Mr. Hidayat August Han, President of UTO. Yang berbahagia Mr Abdul Rashid Eman Haji Secretary General of UTO yang berusaha saudari Nurul Farhana Ahmad Director of the East Turkistan Women's Report Lounge uh, honorable guests human rights advocates ladies and gentlemen assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh salam jumaat uh, panjang eh <laughs> alhamdulillah uh, first of all let us express our gratitude uh, for the opportunity to be here at the Rajatun Uda library this morning especially to be present for our two main program which is the launching of the laporan hak asasi wanita di Turkistan Timur in the Malay language version and also the second one is our forum on sisterhood beyond borders fighting for women's rights in East Turkistan uh, before we start i think i would like to express my appreciation to all the committee led by the, our program manager uh, Farhana and Aida and, and the entire workforce uh, who work hard to ensure that our program today will be successful uh, together with the staff of PIPAS um, and also our fellow friends uh, in Turkey. They also work together uh, to ensure our program here. This is collaboration between Malaysia and Turkey. Eh? Um, and today we also have live in our FB, um, in media social, social media of ABIM, Hello ABIM and also WAP TV. So this is 
this program can be rewatched on our platform. So, uh, Tuan Tuan and Puan Puan, today we're facing with the issues of uh, genocides and operations of brothers and sisters in Palestine. Um, inshallah, we will continue to pray and stand in solidarity uh, with our brothers and sisters in, and also I think the children in Palestine who are very strong mentally, physically and spiritually. We, we see a lot of videos um, showing their, their faith in God, their tawakkal and we can't beat them for that. So inshallah, we, we stand together with them. And today, in this program, we also stand in solidarity with the brothers and sisters of Uyghur who are also facing the pressure and also oppression, which may not be given much attention. So therefore, today our main objective is to disseminate information, awareness and also advocacy on the issues of Uyghur, particularly on the conditions of the, of the women in the Uyghur. Um, as fellow Muslim, our Uyghur brothers and sisters should be loved, support and help with all our effort. Um, I would like to share the Surah Al-Isra, verses 17, um, saying that وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam indicates that every human being is honoured and noble and has a right that can be claimed and responsibility that must be fulfilled. So I think um, I've been believed that education and awareness program related to Uyghur should be brought to the public uh, with trusted sources and also accurate information so that the information received by our community is also accurate uh, can be trusted. Um, therefore, we think exposure to the real issue of Uyghur should be expanded to ensure that every Muslim know and understand the issues. Um, with that, various initiatives, assistance, awareness and advocacy campaign regarding Uyghur have been carried out by ABIM since 2010 until today. So, Hello ABIM also participated um, with this effort and also has organized various activities including coordinating our Uyghur activists, women activists uh, who came to Malaysia and organized few seminar and tour for awareness and also advocacy and education campaign. So for record, in October 2020, um, we received a visit from Sister Rushan Abbas. Uh, she's an activist from uh, US and also Uyghur activist on her tour to promote her documentary entitled In Search of My Sister. So uh, with that, we organized special talk on the women and children of Uyghur, the untold story. She shared uh, her experience and, and all the difficulties uh, they, they face in the Uyghur. And last Ramadan in 2023, we also received a sister, uh, uh, Sister Muyassar and Munawar from Uto. Um, for almost one week and had the opportunity to bring them to, to visit our school in Sungai Ramal and also Rohingya school in Gomba and also meeting with Dato uh, Mastura here in Pipas and also Dato Azia. So I think this is an extension of the visit to have a collaboration uh, with Pipas and also Prof Azia again for, for this uh, launching and also forum. And I think the most um, also uh, uh, memorable experience that we have uh, the opportunity to cook uh, the dishes of um, of Uyghur and the deliciousness and so I think everyone should try the cuisine of Uyghur. Um, and today we are here for the launching of Laporan Ha Asasi Wanita di Turkistan Timur in the Malay version. And it is part of our initiative to disseminate information and build awareness among the Malaysian community with focus on the women. So at the same time we also organize the forum Sisterhood Beyond Borders, fighting for women's rights in the East Kurdistan by inviting our two experts in the field, Prof. Dato Azia as a Suhakam Commissioner and also Dr. Ahmad El Muhammadi, um, to share their view and perspective on this issue. So we hope that the forum discussion will give us a better understanding of the issues and also critical insights, finding of the report, and maybe our panel can share their uh, thought on how can we act on these issues, how can we what are the actions can we take uh, to these issues of Uyghur? Um, today's program would not have been possible without the support of PIPAS. So I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to Datin uh, Mastura, Director of PIPAS, for the cooperation and also the sponsorship for our venue today and also our lunch uh, for this lunch. Thank you very much. And also make her time uh, to launch the Laporan Ha Asasi Wanita di Turkistan Timur. And also I've been press and Uto and also who manage the work of translation, publishing and printing of the report. 
Everyone can download uh, the full report where the QR code been given. So I think you can uh, go through the report and understand better. And also congratulations to all the participants today. I think uh, the presence of all participants today also show a high level of concern. And we are, as an organization, immensely grateful for your presence. Thank you very much. So may we all continue to be given the strength to serve the Muslim and the community. I would like to end with hadith narrated from Bukhari and Muslim, uh, from Abu Hamza Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه." The face of one of you is not perfect until you love your brothers and sisters as you love yourself. So, face is not only seems the perspective of person worship, but also through our relationship with our Muslim brothers and sisters. So brotherhoods and sisterhood have a very special position in Islam and it is used as a sign of faith in Allah. So therefore, let us stand together in the spirit of Ukhwah Islamiyah and as one Ummah, kita satu Ummah. So may Allah reward all our niyah and effort. InshaAllah, with that, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakillahu khairan kasiran yang berbahagia Dr. Fatin Nur Majnina for this speech. Up next, our distinguished speaker for the opening remarks is someone whose dedication and commitment in upholding the rights of the people of East Turkestan. Without further ado, let us warmly welcome to the stage Mr. Hidayat Oguzhan, the President of International Union of East Turkestan Organization. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My son is coming. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear chairman and honored guests, dear brothers and sisters, First of all, I express my deep appreciation to YB Datin Paduka Mastura Haji Muhammad, Brother Zafrul Aris, the rest of the team, and Selangor Public Library for the sponsorship of this event, which is very valuable contribution to the struggle of, people, of the people of East Turkestan. Meanwhile, I express my gratitude to the sister Dr. Fatima Majida, head of the Halwa Abim, for the efforts to make this event possible to bring together all of us who have been supporting and contributing to our cause in Malaysia for a long time. Thank you for, uh, to everyone who contributed and helped our program and supported our cause by attending Jazakumullah khairan. We are here today to launch a special report of uh, East Turkestan Human Rights Human Rights Watch Women Rights Report 2023 to sh to shed light on the hidden Chinese crimes against Uyghur women in the East Turkestan. It is great pleasure to have this opportunity to meet all of you here. Since China occupied East Turkestan, it, is, it has systematically oppressed and persecuted Muslims to the point of genocide. In recent years, China's oppressive policies to have been de defined as crime against humanity and genocide by the United Nations, the European Union Parliament, and dozens of countries. But unfortunately, most of the world is still silent. While the Islamic world sens world's sensitivity on this issue is insufficient, moreover, these efforts didn't stop China from committing its genocide policy in, the, in East Turkestan. Today, when Israel is committing atrocities and uh, persecution 
in Palestine and Gaza, the occupying China has been committing the same persecution in East Turkestan for about more than 70 years. As the people of East Turkestan, we have been complaining for years about the world's ignorance of the situation in East Turkestan, occupied East Turkestan. The operation has no religion, no language, and no race. Simultaneously opposing oppression and supporting the oppressed makes the difference between language, religion, and race. We, the people of East Turkestan, call, call upon the Muslim world, the Ummah, to join us in our struggle against Chinese oppression and genocide policies in East Turkestan. I would also like to thank Malaysian government and non-governmental organizations and people of their support to the East Turkestan brothers and sisters. And I appreciate Malaysia's efforts to protect Muslim rights and defend human rights. In con conclusion, I believe that the seminar will be an important step in Malaysia to raise awareness and fi find solution to the human rights violation in East Turkestan. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan kasiran, Mr. Hidayah August Han for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, now this is the time we are waiting for. Let us invite Datin Paduka Masra Haji Muhammad, the Director of Perbadanan Perpustakaan Awam Selangor PIPAS, to deliver her opening, opening speech and followed by the launching of Report of Human Rights in East Turkestan. Uh, thank you for the uh, majlis. Uh, first of all, I feel so grateful that today I can make it and I can meet Yang Berbahagia Professor Datuk Nur Aziah Mama Awal as a Commissioner of Sohakam. Thank you for coming, Puan. Okay. Yang Berbahagia Dr. Ahmad Al Muhammadi, Assistant Professor International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization. Thank you. And also Yang Berbahagia Mr. Ahmad Fahmi Samsudin, President of ABIM. Yang berbahagia Mr. Hidayat Ogus Khan, President of UTO. And yang berbahagia Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, Secretary General of UTO. Yang berbahagia Dr. Fatin Majdina Nordin, Vice President of Habim Helwa. Yang berbahagia Encik Khairul Anwar Ismail, Habim Press. Yang berusaha Ms. Nurul Farhana Ahmad, Director of the East Turkestan Women Report Launch and Honourable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen and Advocates for Human Rights. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan Salam Malaysia Madani. So Alhamdulillah, all praises are to Allah, the merciful and the beneficent for whose grace and blessing we have been enabled to gather here for the launching of Laporan Hak Asasi Wanita the Tukistan Timur and the Forum on, on Sisterhood Beyond Borders, fighting for women's rights in East Tukistan. I express my appreciation and congratulations to Angkatan Belia Islam, Malaysia ABIM, and the International Union of East Tukistan Organization, and everyone for organizing this important and timely event. It is with a great honor and profound sense of responsibility that we gather here today for the launch of the East Turkestan Report, Women's Report, a document prepared by our 
your rural brothers and sisters in East Turkestan human rights, shedding light on the unimaginable suffering endured by the Uyghur woman in the face of genocide. And we stand the threshold of this historic moment. It is imperative that we acknowledge the gravity of the situation facing the Uyghur woman in East Turkestan. For too long, their voices have been silenced, their stories overlooked, and their pain ignored. Today, we come together to bear witness, to amplify their voices, and to demand justice on their behalf. This report is not merely a collection of statistics or a compilation of data points. It is testament to the resilience of Uyghur women in the face of unspeakable atrocities. It is a call to action for the international community to confront the harsh realities of genocide and to take meaningful steps towards accountability redress and redress forced to share the same bed with officials subjected to non-consensual consensual medical intervention through state imposed birth control methods facing sexual violence at the hands of security personnel compelled to intermarry with other ethnic groups and held in factory under inhuman condition during their high school years are just a few examples of the inhuman, racist and sexist practices imposed on East Turkestani women. The story contained with these pages are heart-wrenching detailing systematic abuse, forced sterilization, sexual violence and cultural erasure. They serve as a stark reminder of the urgent need to address the ongoing human rights crisis in East Turkestan and to hold those respons responsible to account. But amidst the darkness, there is also hope. The courage and the strength of Uyghur women shine brightly, inspiring us all to stand in solidarity and to fight for a future where justice, dignity and equality prevail. As we launch this report today, let us recommit ourselves to the pursuit of justice and the protection of the fundamental rights of all people. Let us honor the resilience of Uyghur women by applying, amplifying their voices, advocating their rights, and working to end the atrocities being committed against them. The forum entitled Sisterhood Beyond Borders, Fighting for Women's Right in East Turkestan, will serve as a way for us to understand more deeply about the situation and to facilitate open discourse among the stakeholders and human rights activists. Prof. Datuk Nur Azizah Muhammad Awal and Dr. Ahmad Al Muhammadi, known for their expertise in this field of human rights, will surely enlighten us with their knowledge throughout the forum. And I would like to congratulate them on that. Thank you. It is stated in the Holy Quran, Holy Al Quran, and whoever save a life, it is as though they save all mankind. Al Maidah, verse 32. This holy verse implies that in our duty and imperative towards humanity to be on the right track of history, to fight again injustice and to save humankind and the mustadifin from atrocities committed by other corrupt individuals. Together, we can and we must make a difference. Let this report serve as a catalyst for change. Igniting a global movement to end the genocide against Euro women and to build a world where human rights are upheld and respected by all. Finally, congratulations once again to all parties who have been mobilized effort until the publication of the report. In the world, in the words of Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, 
I am honored to officiate the launch of the Laporan Hak Asasi Wanita di Tukistan Timur. Congratulations. Thank you. Wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you yang berbahagia Datin Paduka Masterah Haji Muhammad for the opening speech. Now, yang berbahagia Datin Paduka is requested uh, to come to the front accompanied by yang berbahagia Mr Ahmad Fahmi Muhammad Samsudin President of ABIM, yang berbahagia Mr Hidayat August Hain the President of UTO and yang berbahagia Mr Karul Anwar Ismail representative of ABIM Press. Thank you yang berbahagia Datin Paduka Masra and all guests of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, now please remain seated for the video montage of the survivors of East Turkestan. This government has uh, uh, control of every single moment of our conversations, what we watch. Here is the new Hatta ki ram Siz balla kaç ne gittiniz? Pretty much everyone has someone that they know. <laughs> Since China's occupation of East Turkestan in 1949, one of the disadvantaged groups that has been subjected to serious human rights violations is East Turkestani women. New campaigns and policies implemented by the CCP government in 2014 induced the harshest aspects of the policies enforced in East Turkestan, being forced to share their home with 
Chinese state officials, subjected to forced birth controls, compelled into inter-ethnic marriages, and forcibly employed in factories during their school years are just limited examples of the inhumane, racist, and sexist practices imposed on East Turkestani women by the Chinese state. Under the pretext of countering terrorism and maintaining public order, the CCP government initiated a series of repressive measures and sanctions that turned East Turkestani women's life to a nightmare. With the steps taken in this new era, oppression, arbitrary detention, cultural assimilation and human rights violations in East Turkestan gained momentum through high technology and strict surveillance. Additionally, since 2017, detention camps have been widely used as a new tool of assimilation in East Turkestan. The intensified surveillance and control mechanisms led to the increase of various security units in the region, continuous monitoring of phones, computers and religious and national materials become a new normal in the region. Under the guise of terrorism, East Turkestani women are constantly monitored, disciplined, silenced and transformed into obedient, unquestioning, sinistized citizens through various mechanisms of violence. As East Turkestani Human Rights Watch Association, we prepared this report to draw more attention to the suffering of East Turkestani women, to shed light on the experience of women in the region, and to present civil society awareness that can be made as a humanitarian responsibility to oppose this oppression. Şu sek kız yanmadım ki şu et yerle yek yatak geldi otelga şey otelga üç polisler işte ahır bir ayal ayal xtay bir ahır xtay bir kazak elliklerin aşka ab şey kiin ulan de mesela adet ki kim ki ya polis emes şimdi kahpte şimdi arsam pasportum dedi pasportum reception dedi dedim şu jür küset dedi minas Sumkalar hem çantalı hem de otelde kaldı. Telefon, telefonda aşk uçtu. Aşk yatağın aşk uçtu. Şundan şu reception'a bir pasportunu elip ulağa küs ettim. Ben de işte ki vizanı tekşiremdikten de oyladım. Ki en azından o pasportunu kolağa aldı. Sağçı. Elip bir şık su alba vizanım köymedi. Pasportunum aşmadı. Bir şık su alba soraydıkan ki en Koydumuz dedi. Kendi her talaga taladım maşınla maşın turdu maşın çıkıp gobo dedi gobo ne ben bilmem ben. Kimsiz kırgalanın ki bırsın aptal da kişi yok bırsın kendim yok diye beğenmedim dedi ki kırgalanın ki. Kendi o rapor bir poğandı ki bütün aşk kameraları raporlanı. Aşağı ne kopacak saat on şeki on bir yarım saatçe biz turumuz. Kendi Aşa kışan tutunladı, kışan yokla meşe tutunladı ya da kanalla ben de ben canım üstünde oturmadı ya da hem biz o kuburunu karıp oturmaz. Aşo et sıkla minu tutunga kışan ne kider koydu beş kiloluk şu kışan ne mi beş oy bir yıl üç ay on gün tutun. Aşa bir hürriyet dengen bir yıldır mı yetti yaş kız onun günası kızı bilen bir yetti yaş kızı bilen Türkiye bir tutun. Şu kız ne biz ne gözümüz çe aşa da kanak orday. Aşa kaltakla bilen orda. Allah kız boşudan gitti. Karan bu kaldı. Yani sürekli açık ki durdu. Yani orup yani kılık kız vakraş başladı. Benim şık kızla, benim şık sola koysla, benim şık kana bunar mı yok? Benim şık kızım kane de bu kız. Çünkü saran bu gidip, erini ısımını atıdı, kızların ısımını atıdı, vakraş başladı. Sağçılığa yan gelip, orup orup yan çık gelse de, yani o kızların saran bu kadar vakraya verdi. Vakrağın ki mevkı ki ılkını köydüm, köy geldi ki Hemimiz, köylümüz yarın burada alıp kızına gelip, ilk iki bunda putudaki kişenge iki kolga kişen kılıp manaklıkla mağmusunda manaklık koydu. Ilk kız oborunu basıyor ki küçük balığı ömlep bağandık bana. Ömlep bağandık oborunu kırdı, eşit ki dijurunu kızla kırgız koydu. Yeni kaydı bu kız ömlep çıkıyordu kara. Manak mağamı da iki kolunu kıskak, iki kutluğa manak gönü. Şen ne işte sip koydu, vakır mı son, kin alsam da ne kımaydı. Bu kız, yani vakır aşkı başladı ki kemiğini sonra çıktı, bu bu boğan benim de çizlosun bak kaçan oldu. Bu kızın arta kavakta işkime uyuyordu, dikabırını ki yetkisi. Beni 11. dikabır sonra tattı, erken de. Erken bir gün sonra tattı, bu kız yen aldım, erken de. Onların çizlerimi sonra yani tatmedim ben 
imza atmayma ölteysen ölten nem kısan kal dedim şu la bula ile beni senken kapadı şu on iş kinci ayın on bire ve şu serken kapırıp iki yapa verdim sonra kıldan birisi yarastı da birisi talağa çıktı kamera yok şu talağa çıktı ben mesela erken de aprapla uttula aşağıya karhalt ki dege ne geket ki ben bilmedim ki ne bir köy mü yani ne çıkardım sonra attı sen kenge alay talağa çıktı kamera kamera yok ya ge açık ben de şu köle alay şu ben sonra yirmi dört saat sonra kıldı şu akte şu kitse şu ne eskilik eskilik bir numara kavakta ben kitse orjum ne kettim orjum ne kitim Mene can soyan diyen atağın arasında bir doktor han var. Sap valka, doğuş aşağı tuttu galdanı, sap ulgurlanı, eşya gibi aparıp organ alan. Can soyan diyen, eşya bağa vakte eşya ki kız, eşya ki kız. Tağdaydım siz kaysı lağır numdan kaç sorun kaldınız mı? Erken de nesem, tünüğüm bir üriyetlerin kızını judum. Harvoda da sakçıla harvoda ekipti deydi. Harvoda sonra ekildi. Jüyla dedi, ben dijurun ettim, ben dedi aşağı akır başa. Harvoda çöğemez başa. Çöğüdüm deydi duruyordu. Maya kısa maya oldu, maya kısa maya oldu deydi. Mılık mılık oldu deyken can çıktılık, can çıkken ne yaptı? Bırak ülük deydi, ülük. Aş eşedi ben, eskiden aş kırdın anladım, hürriyet ölgen mi? Ben dedim ben köydüm ben bilmem ben aşk kızdan bir hafta yattım aş erkenden de aşk kızdan ne peygam ben aş ne bende can soyanda aş can soyanda aşk kızdan cini çıkıp taşak doktor kan kapı kapı taşak orup taşak eskilikle kalıp aş can soyanda cini eskilik üretti. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, we invite Yang Berbahagia Datin Paduka Mastura and Dr. Fatih Nur Majlina to join us to in front for a special exchange of gifts. Yang berbahagia Datin Paduka Mastura and Yang berbahagia Dr. Fatin are invited to take your respective seats. Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will move to the next agenda, which is the Forum on Sisterhood Beyond Borders, Fighting for Women's Rights in East Turkestan. Throughout this forum, I encourage each of the guests and fellows to actively engage. You may ask questions, share your thoughts and let this be a platform for open dialogue. This forum will be handled by our respected moderator, Ms. Nur Afika Tajuddin. Without further ado, I pass the floor to Ms. Nur Afika Tajuddin. Testing? Okay. Okay, Assalamu alaikum and a very good Morning to everybody. First of all, thank you for attending this esteemed event. Without further ado, I would like to call upon our esteemed speaker to join me on stage, uh, Professor Dato No Azia and also Dr. Ahmad El Muhammadi. Please give them a round of applause. Maybe as a warm up before we start our forum, yeah. Mm. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think um, most of us can scan this QR code for us to get further details on the report. But joining me today, we have two esteemed speakers. First of all, on my right, on my, on, oh, sorry, a bit nervous here. <laughs> because uh, it's rare for me to have these two esteemed speakers to speak about Uyghur and also human rights, right? So today, uh, first of all, we have Dr. El Muhammadi. I think she's, uh, when we talk about Dr. El, it's not something alien uh, when we are talking about PCVE, Prevention and Countering Violent Extremism in Malaysia. Dr. El is one of the esteemed uh, speaker, and I must say one of my Sifu as well in this field. Uh, for your information, Dr. El is now currently is, is assistant professor at the International Islamic International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, ISTEC IIUM, and his area of specialization is conflict resolution, peace building, political science, and public policies. Uh, welcome, Dr. L, to the stage. And second, uh, we also have here joining me, Professor Dato Nor Azia Muhammad Awal, Professor of Law at Faculty of Law, UKM. And for your information, apart from being one of the Commissioner in Human Rights Council, which is promoting uh, the children and human uh, and women right, she was also appointed in 2016. She was appointed as Malaysia representative to the Asian Commission on the Promotion and Protection of the Right of Human Women and Children. So without further ado, I think it's fair for me to say that joining me on this stage today, we have two experts. One is expert in law and one is expert on what's happening on the field or on the ground because most of Dr. L's um, publication is related to the peace building and also conflict resolution. So Dr. L and Prof, so today I think we're going to start our session um, with maybe you can share with us some, some of your views on what the report is about. One of the things that I think they, they have shared is a bit too, about the forced, forced marriage and one of the word that I saw in the video is the organ, yes, organ harvesting, which is quite shock for me, right? Because organ, usually we think it's for us to get our body moving or whatnot, but they harvest the organ to be sold. So maybe this is something that you want to share first. Maybe I'll pass the mic to Dr. El first. You want to share first? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Sister Moderator, uh, Professor Asya. Uh, dan juga I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. um, and, and all the uh, invited guests uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, first and foremost uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me to this event and I would like to uh, take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Helwa Abim for organizing uh, this event uh, on this issue uh, first of all, before I go to this um, discussing about the content of the report, um, there is a few things that I would like to mention. First of all, uh, for the past many years, I think uh, since the beginning uh, of the establishment or the creation of our country, uh, ABIM has played a vital role uh, nationally and internationally when it comes to the problem of the Ummah in this world. And uh, Helwa also part of the, uh, what they call the team, to work in this issue, focusing on the women issues. And I think this is a very wonderful thing. And actually, I used to propose that given the uh, active role that Abin has played for so many years, uh, I used to propose that uh, perhaps they should consider, Abin should consider, to publish a book uh, related to their role at the international uh, stage. Maybe we can call it as the ABIM diplomacy because I think that it's not only in this particular case of Uyghurs or the Ir Turkistan, but also 
in the case of Palestine, in the case of the uh, Afghanistan, even you know in the 80s, Afghanistan, uh, and of course Palestine, uh, the Rohingya. Since there are so many things, but it is not being uh, properly documented and being studied. And I think it is uh, uh, timely for us to look into this. Uh, a lot of people were talking about the Palestinian issues, uh, of course, lately. But I think uh, not many people now talk about this particular issues that is uh, is the Kristan issues. And this is actually my first time dealing with this issue. And uh, before this, perhaps they use a different name, they use a different term that is Vegas. Uh, I think uh, uh, for the sake of, uh, uh, you know, formalize the name, uh, now we are using, I think, uh, the Turkistan, East Turkistan, I think, which is much more appropriate. But of course, um, there are two sides of this issue that we can look at it. One is the, from the side of the state, uh, that's in this case of the, uh, the China state, the Chinese state, and also the other side is the, on the people on the ground, which is in this case, it is uh, East Turkestan. Uh, if you look back in history, the China has a 3,000 years of history as an empire, and it has a very, very large empire and it has uh, strong control over those uh, spaces. And they fought wars, actually, many series of wars in history. You can read this in books, you can read in this, uh, you can watch this in documentary. That's number one. Number two, uh, never in history, China um, is willing to surrender the sovereignty of the state. Uh, they would fight. Uh, in any cause, uh, not to allow any uh, attempt, any attempt uh, to divide uh, the their domain, what they call it as the sovereignty of, the, of, of China. I think this is uh, against very clear in history uh, that they're not going to do that. And I think that they're going to fight, they're going to fight strongly any attempt uh, to do this. So I think when it comes to Turkestan, because I think there is a big difference uh, between people in East Turkestan, in, in Xinjiang or in Uyghurs, with the mainland China, uh, culturally, uh, religiously, and also ethnically. And because of that, there is a sense of strong identity among this. This is what, based what I gather uh, from this issue. There is a strong uh, uh, cultural, uh, religious, uh, political identity that this people in Uyghurs, which actually, in the eyes of China, is not acceptable. Meaning that if anyone tried to uh, behave differently, think differently, rather than what is being promoted by the state, uh, they say that uh, this cannot be proceed. We have to put a stop on this thing. And I think this is what actually led to what is going on and what is being reported in this document. Because they realize that there are a group of people here in, in, in East uh, Turkestan, we're not only having uh, ethnic, uh, uh, specific, uh, specific uh, ethnic identity, but also cultural, uh, religious, and political aspiration uh, for themselves, and therefore they say that there is something uh, need to be done uh, for these people. And therefore, that is the reason why I think the report is uh, accurately say that the, the state of China turned this issue into a security or national security issues. Meaning that it is uh, originally it is not that uh, security issues in nature, but if you look at from the perspective of the state, they say that this is not acceptable, this is not in line with the ideology of the state because this group of people they are trying to do something which, in their view, is undermines the ideology of the state. Therefore, it gives them right to securitize, they call it, securitization of, of this issue. So, therefore, by changing the subject into non-security issues, into national security issues, then therefore, it, it has happened not only in China, but also in other states as well, in the United States, they're using the same uh, things. In, in Russia, they're using the same thing. When you securitize the non-security issues, 
into security issues, then it gives uh, the rights for the state. I mean that it is empowered the state to take an extra, I call this extra judicial measures. And therefore, they go to the extent of detaining, uh, arbitrary detention, for example, forced confinement, and a lot of other things that they, they, they did, as what is reported in this uh, document. Uh, so, uh, uh, however, what we have seen now, what we have seen now in, in, in uh, uh, East uh, Turkestan is, I would say, uh, not to the level of what we are seeing in Palestine. They're still not moving to that direction. There are still some kind of uh, reservation that, okay, we cannot do this uh, to the level of killing these people openly, but we do this in a soft approach way that is through, I, uh, I mean, the Mr. President mentioned about the genocide. Maybe to some extent it's happened, but I'm not sure. But what I can see clearly from the report is the cultural genocide. They try to the assimilate uh, individual or the people in East Pakistan into the mainstream culture of China based on the communist ideology. Therefore, they do not kill the individual physically, just like what we are seeing in Palestine, but they're killing them from the inside especially the cultural, the, ideal, the belief, and the religion, and so on. And uh, the, the method of doing this is through psychological approach. It's a long-term uh, approach being taken um, uh, using psychological pressure, not physical pressure. But actually, in fact, physical pressure sometimes is bearable. But when it comes to psychological pressure, when you live in fear, for example, for a very long period of time, it becomes so unbearable. I think this is the approach taken by uh, uh, the, the state. In order to culturally assimilate or culturally eliminate the element or the, the identity of the uh, Uyghur people or the uh, people in the East uh, Turkestan. So I think this is the attempt. All right. So let me stop there and go to the next very important point. Now, I think when I look at this report and also a lot of report outside, what is missing in my view, I mean, maybe I have limited uh, uh, perspective on this, but based on what I read, based on what I have learned, there is certain narrative need to be created when it comes to this issue. We need to create a certain, certain narrative. The narrative is because the state accused uh, Uyghur people as terrorists. Uh, and therefore, they are using this blanket as the combating terrorism and radicalization. But the question is, to what extent that the Uyghur people involved in terrorism? There are millions of people there, I think 1.8 million uh, people in there. But how many of them involved in this kind of act, which give them, which give the state uh, the right to accuse 1.8 million as the uh, belong to the terrorist uh, group or joining terrorist organization? This is, I think, definitely this is not accurate. This is not right. So therefore, we need to create a new narrative that the struggle for the East Turkestan is non-violent. It is done through peaceful means. It is done through this kind of forum. Meaning that we do not fight uh, using arms uh, struggle like what ISIS did, for example, because sometimes they, they, they accuse that the people uh, from Xinjiang is joining ISIS, coming here to Malaysia, and then later on join ISIS, and therefore they involved in the terrorism act. Okay, so that was the narrative being played. I think that the narrative that we should create is the peaceful narrative. We are pursuing the uh, peaceful narrative. We do not engage in violence. We engage in uh, public talk, human rights discussion, and something that we are doing uh, today. And then, not only that, we also need to highlight the fundamental rights and the principle of, of, of human being, 
just like uh, uh, what been mentioned by the um, <coughs> that thing Paduka just now, and also uh, the speaker before this, that the dignity of human being. bani Adam. The dignity of human being need to be emphasized. The dignity of human being not only enshrined in our uh, tradition, in our Quran, in our sacred texts, but also in the universal right of the United Nations. I think these are the two things that we, we can leverage, that we can use, so that we can avoid from being accused as engaging in terrorism, but we accuse in the peaceful dialogue like this, so that the state's behavior can be altered, can be changed, so that they can deal with this uh, uh, group of people in East uh, Turkestan in more humane and civilized way. Thank you very much. Doctor, for the, I think it's an introduction a bit yeah, on the what's happening on Uyghur and maybe in general term. But one thing that is very interesting that Doctor highlight, I think two things. First is how we here as someone who is not physically there to change the narrative that has been uh, taught to us, right? I think it's normal. When we talk, when we talk about Uyghur, they will say, like what you say, they will join ISIS and they will bring the, the bad influence here, etc., etc. But the second thing that you said, the whatever the government doing is being legalized in a way as a judicial law, uh, sorry, ju judicial measure that was taken by the government. But what's happening there, it's not merely judicial measure, but the crime that's happening there. For example, if I can highlight in the report, if you look at, at page 14 and 15, they highlighted explicitly the Chinese uh, crime towards the woman in the East Turkestan. So maybe Prof. wanna. Uh, highlight on those crimes and what's happening to women in there. Please, Rob. Okay, read my slide first. Okay. 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 Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu Salam, Lashib Al Anbiya, Ibn Musaid, Sayyidina Muhammadin, Wa Alani, Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in. Bishrah li sadri wa yasil amri wa halukum la tamil isani yafqaw kawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good morning. Madam moderator and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go through, I prepared some slides, but I'm not sure whether it will be shown. But if it's not, it's okay. I'm just going to go through. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Fatin for inviting me for, for this forum. But at first I said, what am I going to say? Because uh, being a Human Rights Commission of Malaysia, we are looking after human rights of Malaysians, basically. But at the same time, we also um, work on issues of human rights in other parts of the country. Uh, I, I mean, other parts of the world. Of course, we have been uh, making a lot of statements on issue of Palestinians. Um, in, when I was first appointed as Commissioner, uh, a ch Children Commissioner of Malaysia, uh, of course, my main interest would be the Rohingya children and a lot of the refugees in Malaysia. And that includes um, uh, those from other uh, Eastern Europe, from the Middle East, and so on. And we also propagate that education for all, meaning every children have a right to education based on CRC, and Malaysia is no exception. Yeah, so we, we, I have been working on this issue before. before. But as far as, um, how do I, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrongly, but um, Ugur is concerned, or East Turkestan, um, I met the two ladies uh, sometime last year, I think, um, uh, with the assistant of Dr. Fatin and also Dr. Asma from uh, of the law faculty UKM. When she said, would you like to meet them? I said, yeah, why not? Because as far as we are concerned. And so recently, in January, 21st to 26th January, I was in uh, Geneva because of Malaysian UPR. And it so happened when I was at the, you know, yeah, before the UN's building, there is a, a, um, a, a, 
a platform. You know, it's it, it's just a, a empty space in front, of, like a padang, a square, and there was a, a lot of Ugur women and men uh, actually demonstrating that they were on. Uh, they have uh, posters and things like that, and there are also another group. There was two uh, two group one. Uh, from uh, East Pakistan, I believe. So I believe their issues has been brought to to the attention of the United Nations. But uh, um, during um, the issue of Palestine, we often criticize UN, and and because of its, uh, to me, uh, the most dangerous was the veto uh, power of the um, Council of UN and Malaysia being in the Human Rights Council now, uh, I think should play a very important role. We have made uh, a lot of statements, a lot of argument in terms of giving better rights to the Palestinians. So I do not see why we are not um, we are not able to in, be involved in the case of East Pakistan. Now, in terms of um, can we have the first slide? Um, this is um, Zua as base of introduction. I think may, maybe everyone here is quite familiar with the whole issue. But uh, it's China's uh, largest region yeah, in China, covering about one-sixth of its total territory. I think it will relate to what Dr. L was saying. Uh, you have to understand the political issue as to why uh, there is a, a, a strong resistance in trying to give you self-determination. The biggest uh, region, and it contained about 25.8 million population, and it's very rich with coal, gas, oil, etc., etc. Yeah, uh, it shares an external border with Afghanistan, India, Kazakhstan, uh, Mongolia, Pakistan, Russia, and so on. And then we have uh, oh, thank you very much. Um, and then. The, the first, uh, I think in 1953, was the first consensus over 75% of the total population of this region constituted of Mongols, who are predominantly Sunni Muslims, yeah? with ethnic Han Chinese accounting to even uh, about 7%. Predominantly Muslim ethnic groups living in the region include, um, you know, Hui, Hazak, I can't pronounce this one, Kurzik, Mongol, and Tajik. Yeah. Historically, uh, the population of Zohar is one of the poorest in China, despite the fact that they have lots of minerals and so on. Yeah. July 2009, a riot broke out in the regional uh, of capital uh, Romki, and then the United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights called for in, an investigation into the causes of the violence. Government reported that from 1990 to the end of 2016, separatist terrorist extremist force launched thousands of terrorist acts in Xiangjiang, killing large numbers of innocent people and hundreds of police officers and causing immeasurable damage to the property. Now, I, uh, it's like Myanmar and Rohingyas. Uh, as far as Myanmar is concerned, Rohingyas are not their people. They're not even supposed to be there. They do not belong to Myanmar. And that's why they have to flag to come to our, come our countries, to our region, to go to a third countries. As far as um, Chinese uh, government's concerned, the region is their region. The people are their people. And if you try to do something beyond that, you are terrorists. You are causing a row and you're going to cause. And if you try to get independence from the state of chi from the uh, China, uh, from China, it's like an impossibility because, as you know, it's one of the biggest region, one of the richest region, with 25 million. Uh, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> now, in May 2014, in the wake of this development, government launched. The, this is government of China launched what is termed a strike hard campaign to combat terrorist. Uh, threats uh, linked uh, to religious extremism and separatism of Zhuang. And then in 2019, white paper, the government stated that since 2014, Xiangjiang has destroyed 1,588 violent terrorist gangs, arrested 12,995 terrorists, seized 2,000 explosive devices, punished 30,000 people, 
and for illegal uh, religious activities confiscated 345,000 copies of illegal religious materials. Now, if you look at that white paper, uh, that really shows what are the, uh, the people of Ongo are talking about. Those are the atrocities, those are the genocides that we're talking about now. Now, <clears throat> when this, does all this issue comes to um, United Nations, in August 2018, 18 during UPR, but I went to UPR for Malaysia, and the process of UPR is that we have first process is where the government would actually state what are the status of human rights in that particular country, and then you will have uh, that that session. You have all the United Nations states uh, parties to comment. They were, if there's so many um, um, many. Um, appeal to say, they want to say something about the government presentations, <laughs> then as far as Malaysia is concerned, during our recent UPR, 140, I think 120 states actually wanted to debate what was presented by the government of Malaysia. And they were given one minute per person. Imagine, so uh, our um, uh, KSU of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, make a speech, then Bahayu, then they stop, they ask the country they wanted to make comment. So 40 states were given 40 minutes. Just imagine, one minute. Then we continue with each ministry that was involved in the UPR. Then another 40 was given, another 20. Was given. So it's, it's like, it takes uh, about two hours, but as observer, we, we went in because they invited those who actually send your reports. As far as UPR is concerned, you can send a report uh, as interested party in the whole process. But in May, um, soon, you will be invited to speak. You can actually make a, a speech. And it also will depend on how many people actually say, I want to comment on those presentations. So as far as China is concerned, I think at uh, UN level, when you have to, uh, especially the organization that involved in, in this issue, during China's UPR, China will do a presentation. You must send your UPR report to UN. And you will be invited to UN. You will be able to go in, inside the, the room. You, and during the second uh, part of UPR, you can actually state your stand. Very important to do that. And I do know in Malaysia, there are, I mean, um, Suhakam also do training for UPR help uh, various NGOs to write your UPR report and send it to the to UN. For last year, our deadline was July. We must send all our reports by July. So Abim could do the same if you want to send UPR report to UN based on Malaysia, but help your counterparts in China to send their UPR report to UN during China's UPR report. So in August 2018, during China UPR, UN Committee for Elimination of Racial Discrimination expressed alarm over numerous reports on the detention of large numbers of ethnic Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities under the pretext of countering religious extremism in, in Zua. The government stated that the vocational training centers exist for people who had committed minor offenses, subsequent policy papers and um, our government has presented such centers as part of strategies to counter terrorism and to prevent uh, or to counter extremism. While the same, at the same time during this um, developing job creation and poverty elevation in the region. So they have to answer and they have to tell you and what they are supposed to do. How, how they are going to eliminate all this issue of poverty now. The Office of the Human Rights uh, actually sought access to Zua and continued to monitor the situation. 17 of March 2021, they formally submitted to the permanent mission China to the United Nations in Geneva a request for specific sets of information dealing with various areas of particular interest, including official data based on its review up to you know, of the material up to the stage but did not receive any response. July 2021, again, UN proposed a meeting with the government, and then they also launched a, a research. 
Now, as far as China is concerned, China is member state of all this convention. Dia lebih banyak, more convention than Malaysia only signed three. We signed CEDO, we signed CRC, we signed CRPD. China has signed six conventions. Right? So they have more responsibilities, more to to be, you know, they have to conform to various conventions if they have signed and ratified. Now, this is the recommendation. Now, um, the UN actually has launched a report. They have written a report. Report is 2022. Yeah, 2022. And I got this. This is the recommendation based on their research, their meeting with the government. This is the recommendations of the um, uh, Office of the Human Rights uh, to the government of China. Number one, takes prompt steps to release all individuals arbitrarily deprived of their liberty as well, whether in Viet um, prisons uh, or other detention centers. It doesn't matter. Kalau Malaysia, we had, used to be, we have ISA. Now we have Sosmala, Pokala, what have you. In talking about extremism, terrorism, we also have, are guilty of the same. Urgently clarifies the whereabouts of individuals whose families have been seeking information about their loved ones in Zua, including by providing, providing details uh, of their exact location. Forced disappearance is very, is a lot in this area. It, it's just missing. Malaysia, as Tuakam is concerned, we have done two public inquiry on forced disappearance and both inquiry uh, come one end up in a uh, special inquest being done uh, by the government but the second one um, the, the government uh, our inquiry cannot find any conclusion of course we feel that um, the person has been abducted by the authorities but we were not able to prove it through the inquiries. So then we undertake, um, uh, um, they also undertake to uh, full review of the legal framework, government, governing national security, counter-terrorism and minority rights in Zua. Promptly investigate allegations of human rights violations. Mind you, China has a human rights commission. I attended a, a conference last year uh, in July uh, last year in Beijing, uh, a world conference of, on human rights, but and they invited and tell uh, the whole world what they've been doing, what are the good things, and of course they have been successful as far as they are concerned in eliminating poverty. No one is poor in China, so they have zero poverty, but the rest is up to the Council. So even the Human Rights Council, I think, uh, have very limited powers. Implement, as a matter of priority, the concluding observation of UN Committee Against Torture and UN Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination. So each of the uh, convention that they sign, they have a special committee. You have to sign, you have to send reports, and the committee will make comment. These are the things. So everything that has happened in Zua is in that report. So UN has asked actually China to come up with an explanation why are you doing this to Ugo. Yeah? Ensure that civilians both on and on offline comply with strict tests of legality, necessity and proportionality, including for matters of national security. Cooperates with ILO and social partners in implementation and recommendation of ILO committee. This is on forced labor. That is also and also on conventions number 111 and 122 including allowing technical advisory missions and implementation of convention just to say um as um i remember it, uh, last month no, no, is in the, the december i think the government the embassy of china here in malaysia actually um organized a special trip to Z Z Zingjiang, and uh, Sohakam has been invited to join that that mission, and um, unfortunately, I was not able to go. My my part, my, one of my colleague uh, Tengku Fauzi, he went to that, and in that program, according to Datuk Nordin, the former uh, Jakim uh, director, he said.
China Chinese embassy will organize this trip every year, fully sponsored, and they will take them to this area. And when uh, Tengku Fazli went with Jakim officers, I think somebody from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and also KDN. So if I'm not mistaken, it's a whole trip. Uh, they were there for about six days. So and when I, you know, put in the uh, applic yeah, the invitation, I, I actually asked. I said, "What does Suhakam knows about Uyghur and what do we do in this situation?" Uh, he quickly said, "That's where I went, and I think I and that's the the government's campaign. They nothing. They are um, they are terrorists. They are extremists. They are trying to gain independence from China." Which is like uh, seditious lah. I mean, you, it, it can become something. Kalau kat Malaysia, kata lah ya. For example, uh, suddenly Pulau Pinang said we want to become independent from Malaysia. Sabah and Sarawak has been talking about it for a very long time. It could be you could could be caught in any of our law. Yeah, I, one of it under our constitution lah, menderhaka. Eh? So that's how they have been. Name, yeah. So, so I said no, and then luckily our the secretary to Suhakam, she said no. Tentu, uh, the UN has come up with this 2022 report. So I went through it, and he then apologized. He said, "Oh, now I know." So I said, "Don't, don't. You can go for a trip. You can go for your holiday, but don't get, you know, get carried away with how they treat you." So and then um. Ensure that civilians of uh, civilians of both office, yeah, that one I've already mentioned, cooperate with ILO, provide adequate remedy and reparation for victims of human rights violations, clarify reports on destruction of mosques. That even that is in the UN report. They have to explain why they destroy mosques, shrines, and cemeteries. Cease immediately all intimidation and appraisals of uh, against Uyghur and other predominantly Muslim minorities abroad in connection to their advocacy, ratify international covenant on uh, civil and political rights, which they have not done, invites as a matter of priority the working group and enforce uh, an involuntary disappearances and a working group uh, on arbitrary detention, uh, continues to engagement on um, with the UN in terms of assessments and so on. Now, I, I don't know whether I should stop here, but I could carry on with SIDO, uh, or I can do that later. I could put a pause. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because as far as we are concerned, uh, if you're talking about women's rights, SIDO is the conventions, and China has signed SIDO, and they have this obligation. And what I, what I see in that report is that it's total violations of SIDO, and I don't know what is the content. I, I would like to see uh, China's um, report in terms of CEDO. And I probably would ask Soha Kam next time round when China's UPR, Malaysia should raise their hand. We have to work with KLN, Kementerian Luar Negara, in order to do that. We should put up a sign that we want to say something on their report. That's when you can put this in. And we have to work with uh, Ministry of Foreign yeah. Affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. I think Prof has brought this into one another perspective when she mentioned all the convention that was signed by China, right? So now for the second round, I would like to open the floor for any question. If you have any question regarding whatever our speakers have shared or maybe any question regarding the reports, since we also have um, the representative from the International Union of East Turkestan Organization, so you are free to ask the question. Anybody? Whether uh, those who are following us online, you can also ask questions. Yes, sir. Um. Can you please introduce yourself first? Okay. Uh, Halim. Oh, uh, observers are pointing out that uh, 
they uh they expressed their disappointment with Malaysia, saying that Malaysia makes no mention of the systemic persecution against the the Uyghurs. Uh, Instead, the questions that were raised by Malaysia in their questions to China, Malaysia talk on the how to, and I, I, I read it out here to you, is that one is that to enhance an initiative to broaden the older people's access to public service. And then uh, Malaysia talks about how China continues to promote religious and social harmony. Uh, basically, it seems as if uh, Malaysia is totally oblivious of what is going on, what is happening in, in Xinjiang. And uh, I'm sure most of us here uh, can agree that for the longest time, the issue of we go in at least as far when it comes to Malaysia, it has only been championed by uh, by NGOs and uh, uh, which uh, uh, there has been so many forums, there has been so many roadshows, but the fate of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang remains unchanged if it has not worsened by now. Uh, so, uh, what? Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, would Suakam, uh, how to say, encourage the Malaysian government to, to speak? I mean, of course, we understand that uh, it has been said in the past that, oh, you know, the government can't really say anything because we have, uh, uh, you economy know, strong relation. economic ties with China. But is that is that all? I mean, just uh, is it simply because of economic ties and the government couldn't do anything? Uh, so Actually, it, uh, the government can say something during China's UPR. Yeah, because we can't say it because we are NGOs and we are not from China. The only NGO that can speak during China's UPR is uh, is uh, Turkestan uh, organization. You, they can. Okay, that's number one. Number two, during our UPR, state party can comment our UPR. Same. So during China's UPR, when they are submitting the reports saying that China has done this, we have eliminated poverty, we have this, that, and the other, we even have a human rights council, that's when uh, the this Malaysia through Ministry of Foreign Affairs because we have our duta there we have our embassy uh, ambassador at Geneva at UN so sh you will have to feed her those information so Abim as the counter closest counterpart to um, this organization for Turkestan must actually pay a visit to the embassy to the ambassador prepare a proper paper, state that we would like this to be included. When China represent, if you are given one minute, take that one minute. When I saw the UPR recently, imagine the countries, for example, um, Vietnam congratulate Malaysia in um, abolishing death mandatory death penalty. Malaysia, um, uh, Sweden, we congratulate Malaysia on the... Uh, uh, abolishing death penalty however we recommend one two three four we urge the government to do xyz so in that uh, way we then counted how many recommendation how many they said that you must do you must change so th that is also how we have to help them prepare their upr report then during china's upr we wanted the government we cannot say it. the government can say that these are our comments and we hope China will do this. Of course, we are Malaysia. I actually asked uh, when I met uh, the two representatives uh, last year, I said, what is the government stance on this issue? Because if we have a, an embassy here, same with um, uh, Rohingyas. For a very long time, I was a representative for three years to ASEAN Commission on Promotion and Protection of Women and Children um, in ASEAN. And during my first appointment and my first meeting with ACWC, the first question I asked was, what are we doing about the, the children, of the Rohingyas, women and children um, that is suffering? And the Myanmar representative sit, sit next to me. Malaysia, Myanmar, M, alphabetical order, eh, like that. So, she was seated next to me and the chairman was Indonesia at that time. And then the chairman said, Madam Noor, you do not understand ASEAN. <laughs> we go, we do not in, uh, interfere with any of the issues of our member states and we therefore cannot discuss the issue of Rohingya. Stop. 
And I said, then why appoint me to come to this meeting? I, I do not see the relevance there. But now I still, as, as a, uh, you know, individual person, I signed memorandum with some of my friends in ASEAN to look into issue of children. So I just put my name, Norazia, uh, law professor of the faculty. I don't use my Swakam stand up because that would mean it's a human right issues of government of Malaysia. But I'm so happy that our prime minister, PMX, I spoke in ASEAN recently, talk about the issues of Myanmar. That was the first time, I think, um, some of the state actually open up and say, otherwise, either you are in ASEAN or you're out. You have to sort your, your issues. Same with China. China is in, in UN, but member states, and then you, we must make sure that we have to do the campaign. You are welcome to come to Sohakam and talk about your, your issues and must meet the commissioners and see how uh, the human right body in Malaysia could connect with your human right. But we know your human right body in your country are very much uh, uh, controlled by the government. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Prof. I think I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Do we have any question? Any more question from the floor? Maybe? No? If we don't have any question, maybe Prof, you were saying earlier you want to relate the report and CEDAW. Maybe some of us is not really familiar with the CEDAW. Uh, you want to share a bit about it? CEDAW, um, because uh, Malaysia is also party to CEDAW, we have ratified it in 1995. We have also, because when we uh, sign and ratify CEDAW, we amended our constitution, Article 8, we have inserted equality in gender, remember? And when we have problems like citizenship recently, and of course during the debate in parliament when we amended that provision, it was said that that is only other issue except nationality. So we were like, oh, okay. So now we are going to go back to, to the parliament and have that uh, portion we, we need to, to amend uh, our Malaysian constitution so that it will give equal rights to men and women. Meaning, in Malaysia, I have to explain this a little bit. In Malaysia, men could marry anyone. The children could be born North Pole, South Pole, anywhere in the world. They are Malaysians. Women, Malaysian women cannot if they, they can only marry Malaysian men, children must be born in Malaysia, then children can be Malaysian. Malaysian woman married a foreigner, the child born abroad, that child cannot be Malaysian. That is the law under our constitution. So we have hundreds, hundreds of Malaysian women who had married either in Malaysia or abroad, where, and we have thousands of children who were born abroad, Father is a foreigner and they are stateless. Okay, they are stateless because why? Malaysia, I have a case, Malaysian woman married to a Palestinian. They were married in Malaysia, first child born in Malaysia, first child Malaysian. Went to Makkah, he works in Makkah, the wife went with him. Second child born in Makkah. Have a Saudi birth certificate. Father is Palestinian, Palestinians have no state cannot pass citizenship to the children. Mother cannot pass citizenship because our constitution said because the child is born abroad. So the child, she cannot come home. She cannot leave the child in Saudi because Saudi Qatar, we are not giving you citizenship. You either have to take the child back to Palestine or back to Malaysia. One case. Second case, Malaysian woman married a, Sri, a British citizen, Sri Lankan British citizen, second generation. Rupanya British also have the same law. If you are a second generation, child must be born in England in order to get citizenship. So father is British citizen, child born in Sri Lanka because the father is working in Sri Lanka. Mother is Malaysian, child is stateless. Cannot go anywhere, no passport. They have a birth certificate. Then I wrote letters asking for uh, documentation, just a travel documents, so that the child could be brought back to Malaysia. Now still applying for citizenship. Okay, now so that's issue of 
Malaysia, CEDO, and we have signed 1995 and we still are grappling with various issues. So as far as China is concerned, I think, can we have the next slide? If you, if you sign CEDO uh, and ratify it, you must make sure you eliminate all form of discrimination. I want to compare with Malaysia. Malaysia at the moment, we, I just went for our first uh, consultation, Libat Urus, with Ministry of Women on CEDO because in May, we are going to Geneva to uh, talk about CEDO. Uh, the government will present, then the NGO can ask questions and other groups can also start to bring issues as far as CEDO is concerned. Same, as far as uh, Uyghur women is concerned, assist them, make a report, send a uh, uh, an NGO report to CEDO committee on China CEDO. Then you will be able to speak. Uh, and you can prove to them that you are, be, you are still being discriminated. If you look at the report that has been translated, women in China, especially the, in East um, Turkestan, you are still being discriminated beyond control to me. Yeah? Malaysia is a very, to me, one of the best countries in the world, of course, I'm Malaysian. And uh, when you talk about CEDAW's International Convention, we have been very, very flexible, very forward-going. Women has so much uh, to gain from not only International Convention, but being Muslims, the Muslims' rights are already there. We probably enhance it through signing all these international conventions. It is lack of understanding that some actually said, oh, these international conventions are uh, European, uh, you know, uh, westernized uh, ideas come from the West. I did, I was the first, um, among the first writer on the NGO report on CEDO. And uh, to, to government will send a report, so I was among with the NGO together. I, we wrote our report and sent it to the UN committee. And the only problem I think with CEDO is probably maybe Article 16. Article 16, some say actually in conflict with Islamic law, Islamic family law in particular, because actually Article 16 is talking about equal rights in marriage. Yeah? And of course, now a woman cannot become wali. <laughs> so, but if you look at international conventions, it actually states that with recognition of your local custom, religious practices. So they are all the exemptions. And that is why Malaysia, when we sign, we make reservation, Article 16. And myself and Dr. Sharif Hayati, we wrote that report. I did a report for Suakam on why we should retain those reservations and why we should not, uh, you know, um, withdraw some of the reservation. Because government do a blanket um, reservation. So same with China. So if you have the opportunity, you will have to come up with every article. If China had made no reservation in CEDO, then you will have to go through each one of them. What are the things that they have not done? And they will be able to... The, the committee was just there listening. Aha, uh -huh, you actually signed a very nice... We have done this, we have done that. I give you all the statistics. Of course, it's very easy to do that. Even our government does that. But when the NGO speaks, they're like, uh, oh, oh. Uh, that's uh, the oh, oh, will come. Abolish all cultural practices which discriminates women. Cultural practices which is bad, which... Um, we are very pat patriarchal uh, society. Uh, men is always much better than women in, in whatever ways. Uh, always given the, even for Chinese, for Indian in Malaysia, men is always, uh, Chinese, as far as Chinese is concerned, they would prefer to have a son than daughters. And if you look at their customary uh, law, a Chinese man can marry another woman. They have, that's why they have tipsy, tipsy, secondary wives. Because if the first wife only gives birth to women, to girls, <laughs> even in China, they are practicing it. So they have adopted children system. They have secondary, third, um, first, second, third wife, unlimited polygamous marriage. With Hinduism, same. You open their book on, on marriage, the Hindu men can actually marry numerous wives. And that was the law when it was in practice in Malaysia before we passed Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act, 1976. The, now in Malaysia, Chinese Indian cannot marry more than one. Monogamous marriage. Huh. Married more than one, it's bigamy. 
they can be taken to court and be punished for taking extra wife. Muslim, and they, they, that's what they said. Why Muslim can have up to four? We can only have one. Well, your your woman NGO have go in and had the discussion past law reform, marriage and divorce. Now these are the things that uh, and whatever local practices adat lah, adat yang actually look down on women should be eradicated. Then equal rights between men and women would mean uh, Muslim, we have always said as far as um, Islam is concerned, men and women are equal as far as God is concerned. Allah pun dah kata di kacam dari sudut Keimanannya saja yang membezakan seorang lelaki dengan perempuan. Otherwise, men and women are equal. Even in married life, everything is done through musyawarah. Yeah, no, nothing is about. So that's one. And then uh, rights of marriage. I think in, I don't know whether whether Ugur have child marriages. We do, and forced marriages is part of uh, child marriages. And then in terms of labor, equal pay, and then Muslim woman. As far as Muslim woman is concerned, you could actually emulate what we have because you are Sunni. Uh, I don't know whether you are from Shafi'i sex of group, but we can always look at our uh, our reports in terms of Islamic law and how women in Malaysia has had a better. Uh, opportunity as far as uh, Muslim law is concerned. Okay, thank you, Prof, for the explanation and relating whatever happened in Uyghur with uh, the CEDAW. So I think to wrap up our session of uh, forum today, um, I'm going to have uh, Prof and also Doctor to share what the way forward, what we can do as an individual, as an NGO uh, to advocate or so to help the issue in Uyghur. Please, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that uh, <coughs> taken from the premise uh, given by uh, previous uh, uh, speaker before, uh, we believe in the dignity of human being. That is number one. And then number two, we also believe that um, <coughs> uh, everybody has responsible. Everybody has responsibility uh, whenever things happen around them. Uh, they have to play their role. Uh, that is the uh, second point. And uh, third point is uh, our religion is actually religion of peace. So I think we combine all these three things. Everybody here individually has to play uh, the role of peace agent, especially in this context of uh, women in uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, we have to raise an awareness about this issue, but not particularly in this issue as well. But any issues related to women issues, because it is, uh, I'm speaking here under the Helwa affairs. Therefore, women as a peace agent agenda is very important. Uh, so that is uh, uh, the point that I would like to mention. And that is the base on the, uh, the dignity of human being. Islam is a peaceful religion and everybody has responsibility to play their role. Maybe the role is not big, maybe the role is small, but the small role that we play, and if we play it together, it may produce something. You know, forget about uh, play a big role. Sometimes playing a small role is actually more effective than the playing, thinking of playing a big role. Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to conclude by saying that if the Prophet Muhammad uh, وسلم, thought that I am now living in the desert and I have no means to spread the message of Islam because you know what you can get in the what we can do in the, the middle of the desert in Makkah before this the message of Islam will not reach us but the Prophet just taken the, the responsibility I can do my best now at this present time Based on whatever I have, you can see the outcome thousand years later. And of course, with the miracles of the of Prophet as well. So I think that is the message that I will share with you. Hopefully, something that we do today will be recorded in history as one of the most important events that we have done. And it's also one of the contributions uh, for the people in, in, in Xinjiang and also around the world that we care 
for them. Just like something that happened on some part of our body, uh, the whole body will feel. So something that happened outside there, even though it is a thousand miles away, we still feel it. I think that's the spirit that we carry. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, as far as this um, uh, issue is concerned, um, I think Abi has started off quite well with uh, the Eastern Pakistan group, and you should, I think, continue and continue to assist. I mean, I remember in those days when we first started to do our report, the NGO report for CEDO and various other reports for CRC and so on, the UN body would come volunteer to teach us how to do it. Nowadays, there are groups, even Suhakam has also organized uh, workshops, how to write those reports and so on. We will invite you if you are interested to, to come and, to, and also be involved in our UPR. Because you, last year we had four UPR sessions attended by Muslim and non-Muslim groups, NGOs, and that is a th something that you could continue. And also, when they, you are able, either you are, I think it is probably difficult for you to go to China to train them, but you can bring them to Malaysia, or if they are uh, staying um, in the various ASEAN countries, get, get them to Malaysia organize a proper program uh, that actually empowered them. We, we are there to empower women. Even we could cooperate with Suhakam. We are here to assist in terms of empowering women and getting in terms of issue of self-determination. You can get so many views from various academicians and so on, and that's how you actually assist them in their journey towards uh, independence. Okay, thank you, Prof, for the offer. But kata Melayu, kecil tapak tangan, stadium kecil jali kita tadakan lah. Okay, I think that's already wrap our session today. Hopefully, this session, Forum Sisterhood Beyond Borders, when we are talking about borders, it's not merely physical borders, all the border lah eh. Uh, the racial border, the cultural border, the religion border. Uh, and fighting for women's rights in East Turkestan is just a start. It's a step, it's a first step for us to move forward with more things to come and with the offer that Prof offered to train us on the UPR, I think it's a very good thing that uh, we can work to we work together. Uh, so without further ado, I pass the mic to the lovely MC, Sister Irene. Thank you to our respected moderator and distinguished speakers on the thought-provoking dialogue just now. Ladies and gentlemen, now let us invite Yang Berbahagia, Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, the Secretary General of UTO, and Yang Berbahagia, Dr. Fatin Majdina, to present a token of appreciation to our moderator and distinguished speakers. We invite Yang Berbahagia, Assistant Professor Dr. Ahmad El Muhammadi, Assistant Professor at the ISTEC at IUM. Next, we would like to invite Yang Berbahagia, Professor Datuk Nur Azia Muhammad Awal, Commissioner of Suhakam. Last but not least, let us invite our moderator for today, Ms. Nur Afika Tajuddin. Okay. 
Thank you yang berbahagia Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, Secretary General of UTO and yang berbahagia Dr. Fatin on the presentation of token of appreciation just now. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite and call upon Yang Berbahagia, Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, Secretary General of UTO, to deliver a closing speech on the Women's Rights in East Turkestan report. Uh, Salam alaikum for everyone uh, for joining us, and also I would like to deliver my uh, deep uh, appreciation and uh, gratitude to uh, Slanger Library. Datin Masura and also uh, Sister Fatin. Uh, because of you, we can just uh, help this very uh, valuable event to raise awareness the the human rights violations uh, of Uyghur people, people of East Turkestan by China. At the same time, especially the, our sisters, uh, the more uh, vulnerable the members of our community in East Turkestan, as it mentioned. It, uh, by one of the camp survivors, she just suffered as a woman in a concentration camps by China. So this report, uh, before I just discuss, talk about the report, I would like to talk about our organization, which is Estrukistan Human Rights Watch. It's trying to high, like shed the lights on the human rights violations in Estrukistan by China. So when we are working on this issue, we always like becoming hopeless more day by day after we witness it what's happening in in Palestine in Gaza so human rights institutions mechanisms and human rights commissions in internationally actually already lost their uh, effectiveness uh, when they cannot stop the, what is going on in Gaza but we still very hopeful when we are witnessing our brothers and sisters in Malaysia and other Muslim countries trying to take their initiatives to contribute to the process to stop this ongoing uh, genocide and ongoing human rights violations in Palestine. As so we believe that we can do more for the Uyghurs, people of East Turkestan in China. So our organization is trying to do this to shed the lightest and to raise awareness about the Uyghur and also trying to create every possible initiatives to help our people and stop the genocide. So our first priorities is to stop the genocide. So it is like, it is very uh, easy to understand the suffering of us when you are understand the suffering of the Gazan people. So everyone now in the, the West trying to frame the Gazan people or frame that issue as a terrorist and counter-terrorist attack or action by Israel or Palestine. But what we should now talk about the survival of the children, survival of the women, and survival of the every like the member of the Gazan people because they are being slaughtered. So at, it is the same similar problem that Yes, China trying to frame this issue is terrorist, terrorism and a counter-terrorism problem. But why? what we want to talk is about the survival of our identity, our religion, our members, our women, our children, and the men. So that's why we should like the stay in the context to help, really help our people. So this report actually trying to frame Yes, all the people of Estrukistan, they are facing the genocidal, uh, the violations and the uh, oppressions by the Chinese government as a colonial. But the, the, when it comes to the women, the, the China uh, attack, like targeting them, the first of all as the vulnerable member, second is because they're of, they are the mother who, who will the train their children and give the identity to the children. That's why when it comes to the women, the, in, in terms of to the education and other the field, China like uh, treating them the more special, more targetedly than the men. And the third one is because of to the birth control, because of to the trying to s the decrease the, the number of to the Uyghurs in Turkestan, this uh, forces sexualization, inter-ethnic marriages, those kind of things actually directly targeting to women. At the same time, 
Unfortunately, I would like to, I, I would not like to mention this, but as our seven camp survivors, the woman, the female, the sister, they mention it, that they witness it, very like um, unbearable sexual abuse towards to the Uyghur women inside the concentration camps. So it is not only like something happened one or twice, once or twice. It is something happened every day, every time to just like to destroy the, the dignity of the, the woman, Uyghur woman in concentration camps. So those things had been happening. And inshallah, we believe that we have the, the power to start and start something to change from the raising awareness, starting initiatives, starting the projects, doing this kind of the, uh, the programs together. And this report, inshallah, will meet, it is aimed to be written. So I would like to uh, the thank you again for everyone. And also there is uh, Sister Nur Sakina, she is the translator of the, the report to the Bahasa Malayu. Uh, to uh, this actually very like big move uh, of this report to let the Malaysian people can read and understand our cause. Thank you. Jazakum la khairan. Thank you, Yang Burbahagia, Mr. Abdul Rashid Amin Haji, Secretary General of UTO, for the speech just now. Ladies and gentlemen, now I invite all guests to remain seated for the photography session. <laughs>